Are you ready to live your dream? Motivation, inspiration, and passion. That's what it takes to make dreams come true. Welcome to the Nadia Sahari Show. Our guests will share important tips, insights, and knowledge to help you fulfill your dreams of success. Here's your host, actress, author, entrepreneur, Nadia Sahari. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Nadia Sahari with the Nadia Sahari Show. Welcome. Sit down, relax. If you're driving, keep your eyes on the road. (laughs) We have a fantastic show for you today. She's from the Middle East. She's an author. She's a former celebrity TV star from the Middle East. She is incredible and full of energy. And you better be sitting down (laughs) because she is incredible. So you know by now that my show is a positive show. It's about dreamers. It's about making it, being successful. And my guests will share their passions, their journey, their challenges, everything that they've been through to get where they are. My guests are incredible. Every single one of them. Lots of them are already successful. Lots of them are still going forward with their passion and trying to do their dream. So, is my next guest, and I've got to tell you about her. She is a Middle Eastern TV star, and she has written a book that is incredible. I just love the cover, and when you see it, you're going to love it too. It's timely. It's a personal story that uncovers the fame, the betrayal, and the passion under the Middle East spotlight. It's incredible. So without further ado, I want to introduce my friend that I just met a couple weeks ago, and she reached out to me, and I'm so glad and so thrilled. And here she is, Miss Natalie Rostokian. Welcome, Natalie Rostokian. To the Nadia Sahari Show. Thank you. Thank you very much for this beautiful introduction. I mean, it was so beautiful. And I'm sure that all your guests are incredible because you are an incredible person. Mm -hmm. And and just giving all this passion and talking with all this emotions and pride about your guests. I think that I think that the audience will just be inspired. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. I'm so excited. I'm so thrilled that you are on the show because you're beautiful. Your book is lovely. The cover, the story, I'm reading it. I'm so amazed at this story. I just like, oh my gosh, this is steamy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it is. Not for everyone. It's a little, yeah, it is erotic story, but. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, it is erotic, the book. Yeah. (laughs) So, okay. So let's talk about, I have so many questions and I want to ask you, let's just start from the beginning. Before we get to the book, tell us a little bit about your life in the Middle East as a child. Uh, You were living there. What was your inspiration as a child? Was it to be an author? Was it to be on TV? What was your inspiration? Never, never. I never thought that I could be an author, although I'm a person who read a lot, especially Armenian novels. And uh, I'm an Armenian genocide survivor's granddaughter. So I was born there, but my origin is Armenian. I, I always wanted to be on TV. I wanted to be a star. I wanted to be famous. Um, being an author for me was something like not a dream. It's something like very impossible. And and I never knew that there were so many readers. And these days there are people who are so passionate about reading and they give this importance. But uh, my dream at the time was when I was growing up to be a star and to be on TV, which was uh, like mostly impossible for someone like me because uh, I was Armenian and I had an accent in my Arabic language. And though you and me are both from Lebanon, I think that uh, you know and most people know that when we are born there, being the Arabic, not the first language of Armenians, it's very hard for us to pronounce every word correctly. Uh, But uh, 
everybody laughed at me and they didn't believe that I could be on television. I could have my own show. I could be co-starring in a villain. Kind of like you're laughing at me now because of my dialect in Lebanese. <laughs> Not yet. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, yeah, I love when you speak Arabic. I love that. I'm like, I'm the one correcting you. Yes, Arabic. you are. Like, seriously. Karma is beautiful, right? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay. So now you became a TV star. How did you do that? I, I don't know. The, I don't use the word star because for me, the star are like they they are they are in the universe, in the galaxy. For me, I cannot use the word star because if okay. you really think about them, it's like they're shining at night. So when something is being <laughs> is shining at night, it means secret. And usually secrets are like scary, right? Most yeah. of the time. So I <laughs> I don't know. That's my analyzation. To me, in the, in the field, I started as a photo modeling. Before mm-hmm. that, I was a teacher. I used to teach math, English, and science at mm-hmm. St. Joseph Antonin School. To make my dream come true, I had to step over a lot of things that, uh, for me at the time, were like values and ethics. And uh, I didn't care for any of them because my only thing was uh, that I am being ambitious and I want to be on TV and I will disappoint everyone. I will prove everybody wrong. And even if I have an accent in my our Arabic language, I am going to be there and on TV. So uh, I had to be in positions that I wasn't really very proud of. Mm-hmm. I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I heard a lot of people, I think unintentionally, unintentionally most of the time. And sometimes I had no other choice. Uh, I ruined my marriage. I betrayed. I was betrayed. And I think that uh, if we see, if we think about life that, uh, we all have that, we all suffer, but in that suffering, we just need something to make us live happily, you know, and to satisfy uh, our inner self. And uh, I thought that uh, that's what I was doing. Uh, at some point, I reached to uh, to a higher, uh, how can I say, to the top of uh, achievement that uh, I was numb. And yeah. I wasn't thinking anymore. I was like a robot mm. uh, until somebody walked into my life and like, Hey, seriously, am I falling in love? And that's what happened. So that is what happened. And then after you did all that, you had that career on TV. 17 years. 17 years. Yeah, I was on stage. I started on stage. I was a a radio host, Uh an Armenian radio station at the beginning. And uh, I started to have uh, sitcoms on the television on Ta'al and Future TV and LBC and Orbit. In Syria, we shoot it. And then after the sitcom and comedy, and I did chansonnier on stage. It's like, it's very hard the chansonnier, but I loved it. I love stage more than television. I love TV, of course, but stage is different for me. It's it's like, it's something, it, it fills my heart with joy. When I had my show, it was totally different. I became, uh, I had my own show and I became marketing manager of uh, three economic magazines and I started traveling all around the world. I became agent of two singers uh, in the Arab world. It was very exhausting. It was very hectic, but I liked it. I mean, who doesn't like? I mean, to be private jet, see very VIP people, uh, right. uh, whatever you see by. But at some point, it just came everything so uh, tiring because with all that, another package comes because uh, nothing was for free. Right. And whatever I did, uh, because my talent, my education, my passion wasn't enough. It doesn't matter if you're pretty, if you work hard. There's always a package that comes with all that uh, in the in Middle East, in Lebanon, for celebrities who are there. And with the time you get used to it, when you are a woman, you will know that you are labeled. Yeah. And yes, I was, yes, um, I agree. I, and I'm very familiar with what you're saying. I'm sure you do because I read your book and I know you're part of the story and... Uh, Mm. I went through a lot of that. and I, I can tell you stories. I should write a book about the stuff I went through during my career. Go ahead. Well, you'll do it. I know. Yeah, one day I will. But let's talk about you, not me. <laughs> okay, so good. Okay. Now, that is amazing. I mean, still, you did it. You achieved your dream. You really did it. So that is what I'm talking about. 
that you had your challenges, you had your journey, but you did it despite everything. Yeah, because I, not because I was special, not because I was a unique person. Trust me. I mean, I know that out there are so so many more beautiful girls were there than me, and they were more talented. I think that uh, sometimes when coincidence like just strikes with hard work and your persistence, and you say, "I don't care," I will step over any ethic or value, then you can do it. It's not always like that. I'm not just saying, but I'm just saying. In general, it happens like that. And I was in a very dark place in my life. I, I had an unhappy marriage. Nobody around me liked me. I didn't even like myself. And then suddenly I met someone uh, and I fell in love with this guy. And it, he was like, uh, I think it was an adventure for me. Like in the movies, you know, let's let's spend the night together. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a one night stand and that one night stand uh, changed my life of uh, being one another Canadian author to start writing and to be the first female public figure from Lebanon who dared to write a book about uh, the social and the sexual and the religious taboos. Uh, that's what I did, Nadia. Yeah. I know, I know. It's incredible. And, you know, I have to say you're very brave to have written the book and the way you wrote it is incredible and remarkable. We all have our failures. We all have failures in our lives. Do you have any mistakes that you made? A lot. A lot. I have, I think that I have, I know that I have more mistakes than I have, uh, <laughs> I mean, than I can count. Uh, I always criticize myself. Uh, and I know that uh, I had to learn from my mistakes. It's very funny when we see mistakes and we just don't point out at our mistakes. Imagine I was so selfish that uh, I didn't even have, I didn't even want to have children at the time. And I decided to go and, uh, have miscarriage in order just to keep my appearance and keep on doing a TV series. So I think that was very bad. Something that, how could I do something like that? How could I reach a phase in my life to be that evil? But I mean, financially, I wasn't doing okay at the time too, because it was at the beginning of my career. And I mean, even betraying my husband and taking a lover uh, over my husband, uh, yeah. Uh, it wasn't the right thing to do, but eventually that lover became my new husband and he's the love of my life. Uh, but it doesn't justify what I did was right. And um, uh, even being there as a, a part of this celebrity world and uh, seeing with my own eyes things that go through around me and seeing nothing about it, I think it's a mistake too. And I think I was very rude to people, very rude. And I was, um, I wasn't naive. I was rude. And uh, for me, everything which, which was like related to emotions, funny, it was funny. And I laughed at others and I wanted to be my best, not because I was ambitious. I think that at some point, because there was so much darkness consuming me that I had started to, uh, become so evil that other people's happiness made me angry because I was very sad from inside yes. and uh, the smile on my face was fake in front of the cameras. And that saying is so true. Misery loves company and yeah. yes, and birds of a feather flock together. And it's true. If you're happy, you hang around happy people. If you're miserable, you are around miserable people, and it's hard to be around happy people because you're so unhappy, and and that's what happened to you. But you're happy now, and that's what's important. <laughs> yes, I am very happy now. I mean, I moved to Canada. I followed the guy that I fell in love with. He said I had to give up everything because, as you know, the laws in Lebanon, when you just uh, want to get a divorce, it's not like uh, the West. And I wrote my book because – I want women everywhere to know, not that we have to tell them our stories because we have so much in common as women everywhere around the world that more than we can imagine. Yes. And my pain is their pain. And I think that each woman goes through different kind of pain, but we are so much more emotional than men. However, um, uh, I left everything behind and I had to give up everything financially. 
work-wise power because when you are a part of the celebrity world, you have power and people will need to see you smile, so they will just be there for you. And um, I came here and uh, and 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 be, being with someone, I was having other expectations. I never thought that I could write a book. I never thought that I would be a Toastmaster and then a motivational speaker. That's what I'm working on now. And I had my first appearance three weeks ago in uh, Ontario, Cornwall. I'm sharing my opinions and uh, this is my vocation. As long as there are women out there in Lebanon and Middle East, and I'm not talking in about women who come from very... Um, uh, religious families where they are ought to be to to be uh, following rules, but the one that they see on television, like us, like we have surgeries, we are very sexy, we are very open-minded, but deep down inside, uh, we are as condemned as the re- as the rest. Uh, it's not about the looks, it's not about uh, the car we drive and how many servants we have over there and uh, how. I mean, uh, how much we follow the fashion. Yes. Uh, and it, it matters is that the looks and everything which is appearance there, there is so, so much difference. And there's a big, big, big difference between the appearance and what really the society thinks about us and and the rules of the country. So, and, and we, we don't dare to stand up for ourselves. And I do believe, Nadia, that... Uh, I am the first female public uh, female public figure from Lebanon who is talking about the pain of female celebrities, but I know that I have nothing to give up except, I mean, it's risky, I know, but uh, I'm bringing up the ideas, uh, the idea that others should step up too because we have to have Me Too movement. And when we stand up, others will stop abusing us and the, ex- the assault, sexual assault and abuse, everything has to stop. But no one ever dared to write or say anything before me. So, but I think that with time they will, when people like you give us the chance to talk about it and readers read the book Masks, uh, where yes. I say remove your mask, I think, I hope so. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh, we're going to talk about that book. But right now, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. So don't go away, Natalie. Stay where you are. with Natalie Restokian. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to talk about your book. Let's tell everybody about this book. You're going to have your launch on September 10th in Montreal. Isn't that correct? Yes, it's my book launch because uh, my book became uh, in the 11th finalist in Washington um, uh, forward in these uh, awards. It was uh, among the 11 finalists and there were 2,200 books I didn't even believe it that it was going to be like that. So uh, a couple of uh, Lebanese politicians and people from community, they contacted me and they said that I was the first uh, Lebanese here in Canada that my book had been uh, a finalist. So they wanted to do a book launch for me. So they are taking care of everything, the contacts and uh, uh, the catering. And uh, I would like to say thank you very much to George Deeb. And I would like to say very, very big thank you to also Mr. Roland Deek and Rita Francis and uh, 
uh, Gabby Atalla, everybody who is helping me to, uh, and Camille Maksoud, uh, and everybody. I, I think there are a lot of names I, I'm forgetting, but this is for me, it's, 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 it's not a dream come true. It is something like a miracle because I never thought that I would be able to write in my fourth language and become a finalist in the United States, in Washington, my book, to have a book launch for me and all these people like believing in me and believing in what I'm saying. And, and, and I, I think that making impact in other people's life that, and touch their souls, that brings so much happiness to me now. I think I'm changed now, right? right? I'm a yeah. changed person. <laughs> it sure sounds like it. I want to read a little bit about your book just a little bit here about that masks is a dark, intriguing, tastefully erotic tale of one woman's fame, betrayal, and resilience. Anna's narrative is inspired by real life events and people in Rostokian's life with names changed for safety reasons. This candid journey played out in a part of the world known for marginalizing women, navigates readers through the persistent struggles and hidden traps within the glamorous circles of fame and fortune. That is beautiful. And that is going to be, I'll tell you, I, I would not doubt it at all if that would not be turned into a TV series or a film of some sort. But it's got to be something because... I read, I'm reading some of it already. I started and uh, it was pretty steamy and it was pretty amazing. And I think that definitely something is going to happen for you with this book. That Those words coming from you, Nadia, having all this experience and this life in the uh, United States for all these years and uh, achieving everything that you had and being in Hollywood over there in the United States, that's a very big compliment. And uh, I salute you and I thank you. I mean, it's a, it's a huge credit to say that to me. And I believe that if this story comes out, as I'm writing now the second one, they are going to make changes in the woman's life because we will start to see that we are blessed and we will see that it's very hard, as much as it is hard to be a celebrity in the West, but it is hard to be a celebrity in, in the Middle East. I mean, we come from somewhere... I mean, women, if they are beaten, they were beaten and beaten till they were dead. And then a couple of years ago, there was a law that uh, they could go to the police station and uh, they could say that they were being harmed by men. Do you know how many women had died for the last 10 years, uh, beaten and hurt by their husbands? And uh, that's very sad. Yes. It has nothing to do with religion. Yeah. It, it's it's something to do. It is something to do with with conscience, with humanity, and the laws of the country. It's related to humanity, and um, I think that they always uh, look to us as inferior inferior human beings. And uh, women can give so much more than uh, uh, men accept yes. expect us. We are stronger willed than the male, and however, the male is stronger physically but we have a stronger constitution than a man has. Yeah. That that's what the, that's what a lot of the time they tell me I, I was talking to someone and I was talking about angels. I don't remember uh with whom but he said, "You know there are no women angels." I said to him, "You know why? <laughs> because everybody who wrote about angels are men. That's why." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that right? is so I mean, funny. And then it's like Okay, I mean, they're writing, but whoever is writing, and a lot of people, I mean, when I wrote the book, it's very uh, scary that I was persecuted from people and blamed and laughed. People laughed at me. I mean, people who were, like, close to me. And on the other side, with all the, my respect to the reviews, like Dr. Thomas Lowe from United States of America and uh, Midwest reviews, book reviews, they put in Oregon, they put my book in their academic studies. I mean... Uh, it was amazing. And you guys, you don't even know me in person. You haven't seen me and you are just there to support me. And and this, whatever all of you are doing, I mean, I think that it's a blessing from God. And uh, I think this is not this time a dream for me. It's a vocation. It's a message. And uh, 
now that I have my second chance to do things the right way, uh, uh, I am willing to give and to inspire. And as long as our women are in pain over there, I am going to keep on writing and writing till the abusers stop what they're doing. Well, <laughs> I understand that part because, um, you know, I wrote a book about the abuse that I went through, and it is the abuse that the women in the Middle East go through, and the young girls like myself growing up, we've gone through that. And I'm very, very familiar with what you're talking about. And, But we all have, and a lot of us, that are born there have gone through something. And like you, I escaped it. I'm here and here. No one can touch me. No one can touch you. The, the, fun, the thing is that, uh, you know what? Uh, it's more about even this, that the truth might come out and people should be ready to hear the truth and accept it and embrace it. And that's why I think, as you said, this should be a TV uh, series or a movie because if they watch and see what's going on, I mean, we have so much more than hijab or people just bombing themselves. <laughs> there yeah. is so much more beautiful things over there. But at the same time, uh, we have a lot of taboos that people don't know about. It's uh, so irrelevant to our appearances. I mean, if somebody says, oh, she has silicone lips. And then, oh my God! And she l thinks if she is she's labeled or branded if she's divorced. I mean, these kind of things it happens till today, and uh, it's very sad. I don't think that this is uh, culture. I think that this is inhumanity, and this is using women in the wrong way because we deserve to be happy yes, and we, we deserve do. to live with dignity. We deserve the same freedom a man has and the same choice that man has. Even God who created us does not try to control us, does not even control us. We have freedom of choice. We have freedom of will. I, I agree with you 100%. And, and the funny thing is that I didn't even know that I was running from whatever I had. I was just following my heart because, you know, I think that uh, Nidal, my husband now, he told me again, I mean, to love again and uh, to go deep inside my heart and teach me to bring out this humanity, which I was just not even thinking about it. Everything that I went through when I came here, because I had other plans, I wasn't thinking about becoming an author, but everything just changed its course. I was just thinking that when I marry Nidal, we're going to have a big family and children, etc., etc. Things didn't work, but it worked in the other way because I didn't know God had other plans for me. And all this weight that I had, all this pain and all this weakness that I had, Nadia, I just put them in on paper. And yes. it, it, it wasn't my strength. It was yeah. my weakness. Yeah. Trust me. And it just became a novel. <laughs> and I think that uh, we go through a lot of things. We should not wear masks because my book Masks uh, says that it is not something that we should be proud of, but sometimes we are urged to wear it. But it is very, very sad if we cannot just look in the mirror and see our faces. So I I just uh, decided to overcome my demons and write and start criticizing everything I have lived and seen, experienced. Others should do too. I believe that my personal story, just like yours and a lot of others, about suffering, uh, but uh, we should just uh, foc uh, focus on pursuing the, the success and how we can just make it through and uh, to share the good. And we, can, we should also share the pain because others have to know that they can be in the pain too, but they can overcome. Not because we are heroes, me and you, no, because we had no other choice. So that's how we just overcame our pain. Not because we're like uh, <laughs> superheroes from Marvels, right? Or not? Yeah. Well, it's well, you true. Don't have it. it is better to share the pain and share the positive part of it and what it did for you because it helped you to grow and become a stronger person. And it also helped you to achieve your dream. And that is something that will touch other people and help other people. And, and it will. And it has. And it's, it's not over yet. Let me ask you, what... Valuable advice can you give our listeners 
If they want to pursue a dream career like yours, being positive, what would you advise them? Mm. For me, I think that my advice out there will be like, as hard as you try, uh -huh. if you are destined to do something, it will eventually come to you and God will just open doors to you. But for me to be successful and to achieve a dream, for me, I just realized that the most important success in the world is happiness. And when you're happy, you're successful, regardless if you're an author, like a published author, if You are, you are on TV, if you are rich, it doesn't matter. For me, it's not success anymore. That it, For me now, success has a new meaning. Success for me, when you can touch other people's lives and you can just help them smile and you can bring change in anybody's life, even if there is one person and it gives you self-satisfaction, for me, that's success. And above the dreams, they have to realize that every dream comes with a price, And it might sometimes change their souls to do a conscious act of tearing off the mask and be ourselves and uh, to be able to look ourselves, as I say, in the mirror and not be like handcuffed to the social uh, rules. I think that life itself is very hard to live. I'm not being negative. I'm just being realistic from my opinion. With the suffering, we can just find happiness in small things in life. We have to find the others who can share our suffering and happiness. But to make a dream come true, don't give up. Because the day you give up on your dream, it's done. It's not when you fail, because you will always fail. I failed in a lot of things. I mean, I wrote the book and I was crying. I didn't know who, whom to send to, what to do. Everything. I just even I met you. I mean, uh, through Jerry Hill, my friend, the entrepreneur, Texas. I mean, it's 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 like God leads us uh, yeah. to a way. But I think that we shouldn't give up. But maybe if it doesn't work, if we work so hard on a dream, it wasn't meant to be. Because with every dream, there has to be a change not only in our life also in others' lives. So yes. I will say choose courage and choose conscience. Choose happiness and self-satisfaction over anything else in the world. That's my advice to them. You know what? Be For someone who says she can't speak good English, okay, excuse me. <laughs> You're darn good, okay? You're really good. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fourth language. Oh, but it's still good. It's good. But so uh, very, very well said, I have to tell you. And it's true that our dreams don't come easy or cheap. There is a price. And how willing are we to pay that price is up to each individual. And to get there, to get our dream, to get our passion, and not to give up on it. And I think you're amazing and wonderful. Where can the listeners connect with you on social media and where can they get your book? Everybody can go on. Uh, if you like to read the book, it's erotic, I'm just saying. And it's not for men. It's forbidden men to read it. It's but, only for women. But, hold on, hold on. <laughs> but men can buy it as a gift to give to a woman. Yeah, yes, yes, I agree. Don't forget. You're right there, my friend. Yes, Nadia. So uh, my book, you can find it uh, on Amazon. It's called Masks, M-A-S-K-S, -S, Natalie Restokian, N-A-T-A-L-Y. The family name is R-E-S-T-O-K-I-A-N. You can also check the trailer on YouTube before buying it if uh, you're interested uh, in such a tale and to learn more. And it will take you to another place, another wonderland, but and another wonderland uh, <laughs> with ups and downs and uh, fear. And it's, it's on Barnes and Noble and Amazon, eBay. Uh, you can find it on more than 27 websites. But I want to tell you that in November, it's also coming uh, on Amazon. I signed with Amazon ACX exclusive um, deal. And it will be out my audiobook of masks. And uh, I'm doing it with Nicole Rene, uh, one of the best, amazing narrators and audiobook producers in the United States, also Ohio. So I thank you so much, Nadia. And I hope that they will read the book and inspire them. And I will be looking forward to hear their comments on my website because they can go on my website, www 
natalierestokian.com. They can check the book there too. You're an amazing soul. And I don't think you had reached this phase of your life uh, easily. I salute you for that. I respect you and I love you so much. You're an amazing friend and you are rare to be found. Thank you. So you're doing a great job, Nadia. Thank you. I'm and so I happy feel the same. You your, and the feelings are mutual. And thank you for reaching out. And God bless you. And thank you. And I wish you all the success in the world. And you will be back because we're going to have you come back and tell us how successful you are. And then you have another <laughs> book. So we got to talk about that too. So okay. God bless you, and you have a beautiful day. God bless you, too, and all the listeners. Amen. Amen. Bye, sweetheart. Bye. That was amazing. She is remarkable. She is awesome. She is Natalie Rostokian. Go to her website, natalierostokian.com. Oh, her book is amazing. I'm reading it, and I'm reading it carefully. <laughs> it is, oh, wait till you read it. Anyway, I want to remind you to live your dream. Don't give up. Be the superstar that you are. God bless you all, and thank you for coming and listening and joining this podcast. Make sure you join the platform said I'm on. I would love it. Re write reviews. Do what you want. Share the podcast. Let's show the world that we can live our dream. God bless you all. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in with Nadia and her guests. For more info, episodes, and connection, please visit our website. The Nadia Sahari Show.com. Share episodes with your friends. Follow us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Instagram, and most importantly, never give up. Live your dream. Latin Connection Magazine is a family magazine featuring people of influence, cultural events, and traditions, recipes, and photos of Latin food, Hispanics, and business. Plus, get news on Latin festivals, Latin entertainment, and Latinos in the fashion industry. And see photos of Latinos in action all over the U.S. Conoce tu vecino y mucho más. We invite you to share your special event with us at latinconnectionmag.com. Latin Connection Magazine. Conexión Latina y mucho más. Latin Connection Magazine. It's for anyone and everyone to enjoy no matter who you are.